In this video we're going to have a look at how we can place a button widget onto a window and also how we can cause code to execute when we click the button. A button is a widget used for user interaction. In other words, if you've got a graphical user interface and you see a button, it usually is there to allow the user to click on it to fire some process or other. For example, if the button is pressed by a mouse click, then some process is executed. The process to be executed is usually found in a function or a method if designing with classes. The code, that is the algorithm of the function, or method if it's defined in the class, defines the process. In other words, when we click a button, it can fire off a piece of code to be found in the function or method, and the complexity of that function or method can be very straightforward, or it can be a complex function that needs to be carried out by the computer program. Let's consider this computer program. We will have seen this earlier in the playlist. We will know that this enables us to use TK Inter. It imports all of the facilities of TK Inter. This line will create an instance of a window and this line we've seen before in the playlist and this will set the size of the window. This segment of code is responsible for producing an instance of a button and the button will be called button underscore one and here you can see we've used the word button similar to where we used the word label in the previous videos in this playlist. This is telling the button that it's going to be associated with the instance of the window that was created on this line and this named argument also referred to as an option is going to ensure that the text of the button will be click me and of course this click me will appear inside the button. It's worth pointing out that this segment of code creates the instance of the button but it will not have a visual representation on the window until this line of code is executed and what this line of code will do it will pack the button onto the window why the window because of this here my underscore window being one of the arguments we passed to the button when it was created and what we will see at runtime is shown here we will see the window and you can clearly see that we have the button click me why click me well we set the text here to click me and the thing responsible for putting the button on the form was this line of code this created the instance of the button and this put the widget the button widget onto the window once the button has been packed onto the window the next piece of code to execute is this line here and of course we've seen this earlier in the playlist and we should know that what this will do is cause the application to go around in a loop as i'm illustrating here and what's happening within this loop is Python is looking to see if any events have occurred, where an event would typically be somebody clicking onto this button. If we don't do anything, if we don't click onto this in any shape or form, what will happen, Python will still continually go around this loop waiting for something to happen. And when something does happen, Python has the mechanisms to detect what's happened and perform an appropriate task. If we consider this window, we can see that it contains the button. And if we look at the code, we should know that we're going round and round this loop here, often called an event loop. And what's happening is the Python language is sitting there waiting for the user to do something with respect to the graphical user interface. Now, if you follow the cursor for a moment, what I'm going to do as the user, I'm going to click onto this button. And as I click on, you can see that the button's gone in. Now, I've slowed things right down here. The first thing to say, you can see that this loop has stopped going round and round in a circle. Now that's because Python is saying, look, the button's been clicked. What I should now do is service that event, that click event. So it goes to this snippet of code, so to speak, 
and it has a look at it to see what process should be executed when the button declared here was created and it looks at these options and if you look at the options the only thing there is text is assigned click me and obviously the name of the window that the button is associated with if we wanted some code to be executed when this button was clicked we have to add another option here which I'm going to show in a moment but the key at this point is no code has been tied to this instance of the button that manifests itself on the graphical user interface here. So if we now carry on with the program, we can see the button coming back out because we've now fully clicked the button, it's gone in and out. That's what a click looks like when you click on the graphical user interface. And if you look here, you can see that the main loop is going round and round again. What's happening? It's going round waiting for another event to occur. Let's now consider this computer program and we have the usual line when we want to use TK Inter. This ensures we have all of the facilities on offer by TK Inter. And here you can see I've got a snippet of code that is a definition of a function and I've called that function add label and the code within the function is shown here. If we look at this line of code, you can see we're creating a label and that label is going to hold the string hello world and then we're going to pack the label. Now hopefully you've seen the previous videos in this playlist which explain how labels are made to display on a window. The key to remember about this function however is that it is there ready to be executed. Python will say, well, I've got this function, but the very fact of putting the function here doesn't mean that this will be executed. It has to be invoked to be executed. So don't think that this is the first thing to execute just because it comes at the top of the program. You have to go out of your way as a programmer to invoke it by calling this is the first line of the program to execute and you can see it is creating an instance of a window and this line sets the size of that window. This line creates an instance of a button and if we have a look at the creation of the instance you can see it differs from the last program we looked at because of this here command equals add underscore label. If we concentrate on this here, add underscore label, we can see that that is the name of the function here. Now that means that this instance is tied or bound to this function here, meaning that when we click on the instance of this button in the graphical user interface, Python will say, I will execute this code here because this code belongs inside this function and this button was tied to this function because of this line of code here. Let's now return to the execution of this program and of course the next line to execute will be this line here and it will place the button onto the form and if we have a look at the runtime it'll look as you can see here and it doesn't look any different to the last program we looked at. However, there is a difference because this button now has a function associated with it. It has this function here. And of course, the next line to execute is this one. And we will now go into the event loop. And we stay in that event loop until the user comes along and clicks the click me button in this case, because that's all that's on the window. So follow the cursor for a moment. We'll come here to the button and I'll click on the button. Now, when we click the button and you can see the button's gone in here, we will find that the event loop doesn't continually loop, as you can see here. It will go and have a look to see what event has just occurred. And it knows that the button clicked is this one here. And it will look to the code defined here in the program. And will note that the command was made equal to add label, where add label is the name of the function here. So this function will now execute and what will happen, this line creates an instance of a label that doesn't have a visual presence yet, it'll have the visual presence when this executes. And of course what will happen, we'll see the label appear on the form as shown here. 
Of course, once this function has finished executing, we return to the main loop, and the main loop goes round and round, waiting for another event to occur. Now here we can see the runtime for the program and if I come to the button and click on it you can see hello world appears, the label that contains the string hello world and every time I click on the button you can see hello world appears. So it is continually adding a label to the window. By continually add I mean every time an event occurs and the event in this case is the click event associated with clicking on the button. Before I finish this video lesson, what I'd like to do is to have a look at this code that creates the instance of the button. And I want to concentrate on this bit here. And I'm going to show it in bigger font, as you can see appearing here. And I'm interested in this bit. It's add underscore label. And you can see that that is the same name as this function here, add underscore label. Of course, when you have a look at this function, you can see here there are two brackets. Now, when we write functions, we have to have these two brackets here. But when we decide we want to tie this button to this function, we use this here, which I'm showing bigger here, and you notice there is no two brackets in this position. Don't put them in. Just a rule of thumb for now, when you wish to tie a widget to a function, you do it as shown here, and you don't put the two brackets in this position. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.